Good afternoon friends, welcome to the CEC EDUSET live lecture. Dear friends, today in this session we would be talking on phenols. In the first half we would be discussing on the uses, nomenclature and physical properties of phenols whereas in the second half we would be discussing on methods of preparation as well as some chemical properties of a phenol itself. And for this discussion we have once again with us in our studios Dr. Aparajita Chauhan. Dr. Aparajita Chauhan is Associate Professor in Department of Chemistry, Sri Aurobindo College. University of Delhi. So let's welcome our guest, Dr. Aprajita Chauhan. Hello, ma'am. Welcome. Hello. Thank you, Gitika. Uh, today we'll be discussing phenols, and as we know, phenol is a derivative of benzene, in which one of the hydrogens has been replaced by an OH group. Whereas, if I talk of polyhydroxy alcohols, that means that there may be two or more than two hydroxyl groups. So, in today's lecture, we shall be discussing. First, naturally occurring phenols, then nomenclature of phenols, physical properties of phenol and structure of phenol. In the second half, we shall be dealing with the methods of preparation and some chemical properties. So when we talk of phenols, what is a phenol? As I have said, phenol is hydroxybenzene, that is in which a OH group is directly attached to a benzene nucleus. So, ben phenol is a specific name for hydroxybenzene and it is the general name for family of compounds derived from hydroxybenzene. So, in this case what we see is that this is a phenolic compound in which OH is directly attached to the benzene ring and this is also a phenol that is 2,4-methyl phenol because in this we have a OH group directly attached to benzene nucleus. Phenols have versatile uses and Joseph Lister discovered that phenol has an antiseptic property and he after him the first mouthwash Listerine was prepared which contained phenol. It was named after him. Naturally occurring phenols are integral part of our daily life. And yet we ignore them. Who has not used pain, ba pain balms for headache? Do you know what is this compound? This is methyl salicylate or oil of wintergreen. It is very common when we have a toothache. Our grandmother used to tell us to put cloves in our mouth. What is this clove? This clove has, is a, has eugenol, eugenol in it, which is again a phenolic compound. If we talk of thymol, thymol is again a terpene, which is present in oil of thyme, and it is also used as a mouthwash. If I talk of tyrosine, this is an amino acid. So all these compounds are phenolic compounds. If we look into the next category, what we find is that is female sex hormone estradiol is which is a steroid is also a phenolic compound and tetracyclic uh, class of uh, antibiotics which are broad spectrum antibiotics these are again polyphenolics. Now if we look sometimes we touch a plant that is poison ivy and we get a rash. This is because of urishols present in this plant which act as blistering agents. Then we get another useful phenolic compound from plant aloe and do not forget salicylic acid from which we can prepare antiseptics as well as anti-analgesics. If I talk of curicine, curicine is a flavonoid and it is a very important polyphenolic compound and the structural unit of wood which is lignic is again a polyphenolic compound. It is the second largest naturally occurring polymer in nature after cellulose. But this is a polyphenolic compound whereas if we talk of a cellulose it is made up of sugar molecules, glucose molecules. It is where there is a beta linkage between them that is it is made up of glucose molecules. So now if we talk of uses of some naturally occurring phenols, then please remember aloe, which we get from aloe plant, 
is an anti-tumor drug, thymol, which we get from thymus as oil of thyme, is antiseptic, antifungal, antibacterial, and is used as mouthwash. Eugenol, as I told you, is present in our kitchen spices like cloves, nutmeg, basil leaf, bay leaf, and it can be used as an antiseptic and anesthetic in dent dentistry. If I talk of urish oil, urish oil on one hand brings about causes dermatitis or skin rashes. At the same time, it is used as liqueur in Japan and China. Tetracyclic are antibiotics which are broad spectrum antibiotics and we obtain them by culture of streptomyces bacteria. Estradiol, which is a steroid, is a female sex hormone and it regulates menstrual cycles. Curicetine is present in super foods like blueberries, red wine, green tea, broccoli. It is an important antioxidant anti-cancerous, anti-aging, and, and it increases immunity. Therefore, it is also, it, we say that it is present in the foods in which, fruits in which there it is present are known as superfoods. Oil of wintergreen is a natural ester which is present in wintergreen plants of species Glutheria. It again can be used as a topical analgesic, fragrance in foods and beverages, and it is a herbal tea, which gives us a relaxing effect. Lignin, which is a derivative of coniferyl alcohol, supports material of woody plants. So it is a supporting, uh, what, what do we call a derivative or supporting material compound. Some more uses of phenols are carvacarol, which acts as an antioxidant, an antimicrobial, and neuroprotectant. Serotonin or dopamine is a natural neurotransmitter. Tyrosine is a naturally occurring non-essential amino acid, which is used in protein synthesis. So what we find is that these naturally occurring phenols have wide uses from anti-cancerous, chemo-preventive, antioxidant, analgesics, antiseptics, neurotransmitters, sex hormones, antibiotics, and structural material of what? Not only this, if I talk of a phenol, it is a precursor to many useful compounds. For example, phenol, which is carbolic acid, can act as a disinfectant as well as antiseptic. Orthophenylphenol can act as a fungicide for waxing citrus fluids. Picric acid, trinitrophenol, is an explosive material. Phenophthalene is a pH indicator. Bakelite, which is a resin of phenol and formaldehyde, is a substitute for plastic and is used for making handles of cookers and other utensils in the kitchen. Phenol reacts with disonium salts, resulting in formation of azodyes. It can also be used for making nylon, epoxides, aspirin, and cellol, which is an internal antiseptic. So we take phenols for granted, but we know that these phenolic compounds have a vast use in our daily life, so we cannot overlook them. So if we have to classify phenolic compounds, we can classify them as simple phenols and the simplest phenol is hydroxybenzene or they can be polyphenols based on the number of phenolic units in the molecule. Next we have to, before we proceed further, I would like to introduce you to the certain rules of naming phenols. In most of the cases where no other principal functional group is taken, we take phenol as the basic unit. So this molecule will be named as phenol and since chlorine is present here, 
at the fourth position chlorine will be taken here as the substituent and we will name this compound as 4 chlorophenol or orthochlorophenol. Second example where we have nitro at the second position is named as 2 nitrophenol or orthonitrophenol and the third is 3 bromophenol or meta position meta bromophenol. So, if the substituents are relatively placed at 1, 4 it is the para, at 1, 2 then it is the ortho derivative and if I talk of the 1, 3 then it is a meta compound. Now, if we talk of chrysols, chrysols are methyl phenols. So, they are methyl phenols are popularly known as chrysols. First case is 2 methyl phenol, second is 3 methyl phenol which is also known as metacrysol and third is 4 methyl phenol which is paracrysol. If you look into these examples then what we find is that these are simply position isomers because the molecular formula would be same if we look into the molecular formula of these compounds it would be C7H8O and but the relative position of the two groups that is the methyl and the OH is different so they are position isomers. If I talk of a dihydroxy or a trihydroxyphenol then they are named as diols or triols. For example, 1,2-benzene diol is known as catechol and 1,3-benzene diol is known as risocinol. If I talk of 1,3,5-benzene triol it is popularly known as fluoroglucinol whereas pyrogalol is 1, 2, 3 benzene triol and hydroxyquinol is 1, 2, 4 benzene triol. So, we are naming these as derivatives of benzene and since 3 hydroxyl groups are present on this, mo this molecule we name it as a triol. If we look into other substituted phenols, then what in this case what we have done again is we have taken phenol as the parent molecule and since we have taken phenol as the parent molecule we have and it has two chlorine atoms here. So, we have given the relative position of the chlorine atoms according to the lower sum rule. So, this compound becomes 2,4-dichlorophenol. So, here the chloro groups are the substituent and the phenol moiety is taken as the parent molecule. If we look into this next example again here we have taken phenol as the parent then we have done numbering according to the lowest sum rule, but we have placed these substituents in front of the root name in alphabetical order. So, the name becomes 4 chloro 2 nitro phenol. Now, in these examples I have taken some groups or some molecules in which OH is not to be taken as the parent group. In this case according to the priority table what we find is CHO group is the parent group. So, CHO along with benzene the basic molecule becomes benzyl dehyde and rest of the three substituents are the substituent groups. So, now and then now what we do is we name it number this chain giving number 1 to the principal functional group which is CHO. So, and now we will name it in alphabetical order. So, the name would become 5 chloro 2, 4 dihydroxy benzyl dehyde. Similarly, in the next reaction example benzyl dehyde is taken as the parent and the hydroxy and the nitro groups are taken as the substituent groups. So, when they are taken as the substituent groups again we will be naming these putting these substituents in alphabetical order before the root name. So, the root name here is benzyl dehyde and the two substituent here is a hydroxy and nitro. So, H occurring before nitro before nitrogen the name becomes 4 hydroxy 2 nitro benzene. Next is an example of a 
asset. So in this case, what we've done is we've taken COOH as the parent group and then we've taken the two hydroxy groups as the substituent groups. Here I would like to clarify as we've done earlier on also that if the relative position of the two OH groups is 1, 3, then we call that compound as risocinol. So now we can name this compound in two ways, first according to the IUPAC system, according to which the name would be 2,4-dihydroxybenzoic acid. But if I talk of the popular name, then as I said that this basic molecule having two OH groups at 1 and 3 position is resorcinol. So we will call this as beta resorcylic acid, which is it, by which name it is popularly known as. The last example in this series is an example of ester. So we know if this was a simple compound without having substituents of halogen and the hydroxyl group, this would be named as ethyl benzoate. And now along with this, we have two substituents, chloro, which is at second position, and the hydroxy, which is at fourth position. So now this compound will be named as ethyl, which indicates that this is an ester, two chloro, four hydroxy. These are the two substituents on this nucleus and then benzoate since it is an ester. So the full name of this compound would be ethyl 2-chloro-4-hydroxy-benzoate. Now the second example or the next category of compounds, phenolic compounds can be derivatives of naphthalene or phenanthracene. We know when two rings are fused together, this molecule without an OH is naphthalene and this molecule is phenanthracene. So now what we have done here is these, in this case the hydroxyl group is attached to a polycyclic benzoid ring that is it is having more than one cyclic ring and the chemical properties of these compounds are similar to phenols but they are called as naphthols because here the basic molecule as I, as I told you polynuclear hydrocarbon is naphthalene and we have replaced one hydrogen at position 1 by OH or this position is also known as the alpha position. So this is known as 1 naphthol or alpha naphthol. If I look into the second example, then in this case this OH is attached at the second carbon or at the beta carbon. So this is known as beta naphthol. If I look into the phenanthracene, then we start numbering from this ring. 1, 2, 3, 4, then we go on to the other ring which is 5, 6, 7, 8 and the hydroxyl group is present at the ninth carbon. So we name this compound as 9 phenanthrol. So this was the naming of the phenolic compounds and I believe you, sh you will get some help from these examples. Now if we look into the structure of phenol, then we know that in benzene, all the ring atoms are sp2 hybridized and what we find here is here the bond is between carbon and the oxygen atom and now if I look into the orbital structure of this molecule what we find is that sp2 hybridized orbital of carbon overlaps with the sp3 hybridized orbital of oxygen to form a sigma bond here. Then two lone pair of electrons are present in the sp3 hybridized orbital of oxygen and one sp3 hybridized orbital of oxygen is involved in bond formation with hydrogen. As we shall see later what we find is that this oxygen is attached to an electron withdrawing group here. This sp2 hybridized phenyl group is more electronegative and it will pull the electrons towards itself. As a result, phenol is dipolar, is a polar molecule and its dipole moment is 1.54 d. If we compare this phenol with an alcohol, then what we find is that alcohols and phenols both have a hydroxyl group. They have the same functional group. But 
yet the properties of phenol and alcohols are very different. The first thing when we look into the structure of these two molecules, what instantly comes into our mind that alcohol is more polar as compared to phenol. Why is this so? Because in phenol alcohol, the carbon to which oxygen is attached is sp3 hybridized. Whereas if I talk of phenol, then in this the carbon to which the oxygen is attached is sp2 hybridized. Since it is sp2 hybridized, it is more electro, it has more s character and it is more electronegative as compared to a sp3 hybridized carbon. So it will pull electrons more towards itself. So carbon and oxygen will have a partial double bond character here because of the conjugation of lone pair of electrons on oxygen with the pi electrons and phenol will be we can say less polar as compared to alcohol. Not only this, the cleavage of OH bond will be easier as compared to alcohol. This we will be seeing in the next slide. As we know that phenol cannot be represented, that is all the properties of phenol cannot be represented by a single valency bond structure. It is a hybrid of the following resonating structures. And if you look into second, third and fourth structure, what we find here is that in this cases, oxygen has a positive charge on it. Since oxygen has a positive charge on it, it will pull electrons towards itself from the OH bond. As a result of which, this OH bond will become weak and this H will be given off as proton. So we can say if we are comparing alcohols with phenols, we can say phenols will be more acidic as compared to alcohols because this the cleavage of this bond is easier as compared to OH bond in alcohols. Second thing what we find is after the cleavage of OH bond, what we get here is a phenooxide ion. And this phenooxide ion is again resonance stabilized. Since it is resonance stabilized and if we look into the structure, here there is no charge separation. So we can say that the phenooxide ion is more stable as compared to phenol. Hence, phenol has a tendency to give H as H positive. Now, if we look into the physical properties of phenol, then what do we find that phenol has a hydroxyl group in it. Since it has an hydroxyl group in it, it can exhibit intermolecular hydrogen bonding between the phenol molecules because there is intermolecular hydrogen bonding between the phenol molecules, phenol acts as polymeric aggregates. So its molecular weight increases many times. Not only this, if we compare the boiling point of phenol with toluene whose molecular weight is comparable to phenol, then what we find is that phenol has higher boiling point because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding here because more energy will be required to break this bond. No such bonds are formed in toluene. Next what we have is that phenol is also capable of forming intermolecular hydrogen bonds with water molecules. As a result of this, phenol is partially soluble in water. Whereas if I talk of a methanol or ethanol, we say they are freely soluble in water. There also we have intermolecular hydrogen bonding. It is because of this intermolecular hydrogen bonding that phenol is soluble in water and is partially soluble in water. It is why is it partially soluble? We can say it is having intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Still phenol is partially soluble. It is because of this phenyl group which is non-polar and it forms the major part of the phenolic phenol. Hence 
phenol is partially soluble in water and it is soluble in organic solvents like ether. Phenol not only shows intermolecular hydrogen bonding, it is also capable of forming intramolecular hydrogen bonds provided a carbonyl group or a nitro group is present at ortho position to the OH. So, what we have here is and because of this intramolecular hydrogen bonding, the physical and the prop chemical properties of these molecules are altered. For example, if we look into this example that is ortho hydroxy acetophenone then what we find here is that these two groups are placed at ortho position and because of this here we have intramolecular hydrogen bonding and if I look into the nit ortho nitrophenol again what we find here is that there is intramolecular hydrogen bonding here. So, because of this intramolecular hydrogen bonding these phenolic compounds do not occur as aggregates, they just occur like this. So, now if I we are able to prepare or we have to separate a mixture of ortho nitrophenol and para nitrophenol, how can we do this? What we find is because of intramolecular hydrogen bonding, the boiling point here would be low, whereas boiling point of para nitrophenol will be high because of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Second, because of intramolecular hydrogen bonding, this phenol ortho nitrophenol will not be soluble in water. So, we can exploit this to separate a mixture of phenol ortho nitrophenol and para nitrophenol by steam distillation. That is ortho nitrophenol since its boiling point is low is steam volatile and secondly it is not soluble in water because of the dominance predominance of intramolecular hydrogen bonding and we will be able to separate the two structures that is ortho nitrophenol and para nitrophenol. Uh, so, thank you we will stop here for a minute and then we will take up the methods of preparation of phenols. <laughs> Welcome back. In this session, we will be talking about methods of preparation of phenols. Initially, phenol was prepared from coal tar. We know that the middle oil fraction of coal tar, which has boiling point between 413 to 513 Kelvin, contains phenol, chrysols, and naphthalene. On cooling this fraction, naphthalene se separates out. Then, this phenolic layer is treated with alkali. When it is treated with alkali the and it is separated from rest of the oils. Then carbon dioxide is bubbled through it when phenol libera liberates out as phenooxides. But nowadays most of the phenol is prepared from petroleum products. We can prepare phenol from haloarenes. This method was first developed by Do Dow Chemical Company in 1928. In this what we do is we treat chlorobenzene with 5 percent NaOH solution at 613 Kelvin at pressure of 320 atmospheres. But we know that this is an example of ipso nucleophilic substitution reaction that is ipso if what I mean by ipso nucleophilic substitution here is that is we are substituting any other atom other than hydrogen in it. So, in this case we are replacing a chlorine and we know that chlorine and undergoes the lone pair of electrons on chlorine atom 
undergo conjugation with pi electrons of the benzene ring. So, this has a partial, the CCL bond has a partial double bond character. Hence, the cleavage of this bond is difficult. So, the reaction has to be done under drastic conditions that is at high temperature 613 Kelvin and 320 atmospheric pressure. So, what we find here is, so this molecule now undergoes, undergoes substitution by benzyne mechanism. That is, if an electron withdrawing, please look into this molecule, there is no electron withdrawing group present on the benzene nucleus. So, it undergoes substitution by benzyne mechanism. What happens in benzyne mechanism is a special type of nucleophilic substitution reaction in which first elimination takes place and then addition takes place resulting in a substituted product. So, what we find here is that this ortho hydrogen is acidic in nature because of the presence of this electron withdrawing, strongly electron withdrawing Cl. When this Cl puts this, pulls electrons towards itself, the bond, this bond becomes weak and this can be given of this hydrogen is eliminated as proton in presence of a strong nucleophile. So, what happens here is that OH abstracts this H as a proton and in the second resulting in the formation of a carbon ion. Now, this carbon ion is stable because of the presence of the halogen atom here, the chlorine atom here. Now, in the second step here in elimination only, this sodium subtracts a chlorine from here and what we find here is that this form, this uh, forms a weak bond here. This weak bond is found formed by the sideways overlap and it is outside the ring and what you will be and it is highly unstable because this bond is weak and this molecule is aromatic in nature which we shall be discussing later when we do aryl halides. Now, what happens is then in second step this strong nucleophile OH acting as a nucleophile attacks this carbon and an electromeric effect takes place here moving these electrons to this next position. And what we get here is we get a anion here again. And when we get an anion here, this anion reacts with proton here that is the protonation of that ion, anion occurs resulting in formation of sodium phenooxide. This sodium phenooxide on acid hydrolysis results in the formation of phenol. So, this reaction is difficult, but what has been observed that if a very strong electron withdrawing group is present at ortho or para positions to the chlorine atom, then the substitution reaction will take place easily. For example, if I have one nitro group at the ortho position, then here the reaction will take place at 433 Kelvin at atmospheric pressure and this chlorine will be replaced by a OH. So, the hydrolysis here is easier. Whereas, if we place two nitro groups, one at the ortho position and second at the para position, then the reaction can be done with a weaker base such as aqueous sodium, carbo carb sodium carbonate at 403 Kelvin. And the substitution reaction is easier and we get a higher yield. Whereas, if we take 2, 4, 6 trinitrophenol, trinitrochlorobenzene, then what we find here is that the 3 nitro groups are so electron withdrawing that is they withdraw the electrons towards themselves through minus i and minus r effect as a result of which the bond between this C and C L becomes very weak and now we can bring about hydrolysis just by steam resulting in formation of 246 trinitrophenol and this 246 trinitrophenol is very very acidic in nature it reacts with sodium carbonate and liberates carbon dioxide from it so what we've seen is that if we put electron withdrawing groups at ortho and para position to the halogen atom, then hydrolysis takes place 
easily. The next very important method of preparation of phenol is from cumin and propene. Both these reagents, cumin is, and benzene, sorry, they are very cheap, they are not very expensive, and they result in the formation of two very important synthetic reagents like phenol and acetone. So what we find here is that if, it, if I start with cumin, we can treat cumin with oxygen, aerial oxygen. This undergoes oxidation to form cumin hydroperoxide and this cumin hydroperoxide on acid hydrolysis gives acetone and phenol. Now let us look into the mechanism in detail. So what happens is in this reaction that is first propene undergoes reaction with H plus that is this is a Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction. Fe propene reacts with H plus to give us a secondary carbocation. This secondary carbocation acts as an electrophile and reacts with benzene to resulting in formation of cumin. Now this cumin reacts with aerial oxidation or it undergoes aerial oxidation to form cumin hydroperoxide. This cumin hydroperoxide undergoes reacts with H plus to form protonated cumin hydroperoxide and when I talk of protonated chromine hydroperoxide, what we find here is that this molecule here, this water molecule here, oxygen has a positive charge here, it takes this bonding pair of electrons and water molecule is eliminated from here resulting in a formation of a species in which oxygen, electronegative oxygen has a positive charge on it. And we know that if a positively less electropositive atom has a positive charge on it, then that species is more stable. So what happens here is these, these two steps that is elimination of water and migration of this phenyl group from this carbon to oxygen takes place simultaneously resulting in the formation of carbocation. So what happens here is that the phenyl group has migrated from this carbon to this oxygen resulting in a carbocation. Now this carbocation is electrophilic in nature that is and therefore this water which acts as a nucleophile goes and forms a bond with this carbon which is having a positive charge forming this species, this intermediate. Now in this intermediate what happens is that proton migration that is this proton is eliminated from here or this migrates from here to this place to this oxygen. This oxygen again in this molecule has a positive charge on it. So here two things are taking place simultaneously. One the bond the migration of electrons from this carbon oxygen bond to this O positive resulting in the cleavage of this bond that is we get phenol and here H is lost water takes H from here resulting in deprotonation and formation of acetone. So what we find is that from two very simple compounds that is propene and benzene we are able to get two very important compounds that is phenol and acetone. The next method of preparation is from benzene. Although we have given the heading here disonium salts, we cannot put directly OH group that is we cannot bring about electrophilic substitution reaction here. So what we do here is first we do the nitration, then we reduce the nitro group to a amino group bringing about diazotization and then hydrolysis to give us phenolic compounds. So what we find here is that we are taking benzene when we do the nitration we are taking benzene and we are we will reflux this benzene with concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid which will act here as a catalyst and please remember the electrophile in this reaction will be a nitronium ion. We will reflux this at 55 degrees Celsius for 3 to 4 hours when we will get nitrobenzene by electrophilic 
substitution reaction. Now, in the next step, what we will do is we will reduce this nitrobenzene. So, for this, what we do is we take the reducing agent that is tin and hydrochloric acid. When we reflux it again with this tin and hydrochloric acid, this nitro group is reduced to amino group. Instead of tin and hydro concentrated hydrochloric acid, we can also take lithium aluminum hydride as a reducing agent and we will get aniline. Now, what we do is we convert this aniline into a disonium salt. So, we treat this, we know nitrous acid is unstable and it has to be prepared in C2 that is in the reaction medium. So, what we do is we do the reaction of nitrous acid with hydro with uh, sodium nit sorry we do the reaction of sodium nitrite with hcl when we get hono we keep the reaction temperature before 0 degrees before te below 10 degrees when we get benzene disonium chloride this is a diazotization reaction and this disonium chloride salts can now be used at 0 to 5 degrees with phenol or substituted phenols to form azodyes. If now we raise the temperature that is we warm this mixture above 10 degrees with water, this results in the formation of phenol along with elimination of nitrogen. So, this is also a good method for preparation of phenol, but mostly phenol is prepared by reaction of benzene with propene that is by cumin method. The last method that we are going to discuss today for preparation of benzene is from sodium salts of sulfonic acid. So, what we do is in this reaction is that the sodium salt of benzene sulfonic acid is fused with NaOH at 573 Kelvin when we get sodium phenooxide and this sodium phenooxide on acidification results in formation of phenol. So, these were the some methods by which phenol can be prepared in laboratory as well as in industry. Now, if we talk of the chemical properties of phenols, we can discuss them under different heads like properties due to cleavage of OH bond, properties due to cleavage of CO bond which is the nucleophilic substitution reactions or the characteristic reactions of benzene nucleus which are electrophilic substitution reactions. So, to start with today we will begin with the cleavage of OH bond in phenol. So, we know that because of the cleavage of OH bond phenol is acidic in nature. Now, when we discuss the acidity, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is that we have to see that if the acid is strong, the base will be weak or base will be stable. So, whenever we are discussing the, prop, the acidity of different compounds, so for first what we will do is we will convert the parent compound that is acid into its conjugate base and then we will compare the basicity of the different bases and if the base is weak or stable then the conjugate acid will be stronger. So, here if we now if we look into this category the broad category if we compare acidity of phenol with alcohol and carboxylic acids what we find is that alcohol is least acidic and carboxylic acids are more acidic as compared to phenol. So, what we can say here is phenol is more acidic than alcohols, but less acidic than carboxylic acids. Why is it so? Now, if I look into the reaction of reaction of phenol of water ionization of alcohol, then what we find is that alcohols that is ethanol ionizes to give us a ethyl oxide ion. This ethyl oxide ion is a conjugate base of ethanol. Similarly, phenol ionizes to give phenooxide ion. This I have discussed pre previously also that since 
this carbon here is sp2 hybridized this vinyl group acts as an electron withdrawing group and it will withdraw the electrons towards itself as a result of which this bond becomes weak and h is given off as h plus easily whereas cleavage of this bond is comparatively difficult as compared to phenol second thing that we have to look into is the conjugate base here what we know is that this ethyl group has a plus i effect. As a result of plus i effect, the electron density on this oxygen increases and this is a stronger base as compared to phenol. So what we find is even if we talk of the properties then what we see is that both phenol and alcohol react with electropositive metals like sodium, potassium but alcohol does not react with bases like NaOH, KOH whereas phenol does. Neither does alcohol turn blue litmus red. So alcohol is less acidic as compared to phenol. Now if we look into how can we explain this further is that when I look into phenol the resonating structures of phenol then what we find here is that this, this and this structure that is second, third and fourth structure have a positive charge on oxygen and this bond can be because of this, this bond is cleaves easily. Not only this, this cleaves to give us a phenooxide ion and when we look into the phenooxide ion, here the negative charge is delocalized over the benzene ring. This negative charge was delocalized over phenol molecule also but phenooxide uh, is more stable because here there is no separation of charges. There is no positive charge and there is no negative charge whereas if I look into phenol oxygen has a positive charge that is electronegative atom has a positive charge and electropositive atom has a negative charge. So the energy of this molecule is high because we have to separate the charges. Whereas in this case, there is only dispersion of the negative charge and the phenooxide ion is more stable as compared to phenol. So phenol has a tendency to lose H plus and convert into phenooxide ion which is a stable base. Hence phenol is more acidic than alcohol because in alcohol as we have seen that there is no delocalization of the negative charge, this negative charge is over localized over oxygen. Now if we have to compare at the same time the acidity of phenol with a carboxylic acid, what we will do here is again we will discuss the stability of the conjugate bases because please remember if the base is weak the acid will be strong and now in this case what we find is although phenol has more resonating structure but here what we find is that the negative charge is present on a electropositive atom. So this structure is less stable because we know when we talk of the stability of the resonating structures those structures are more stable which are equivalent. So what we find in case of a carboxylate ion these two structures are equivalent and second the negative charge is on electronegative oxygen. So these, uh, this carboxylate ion is more stable. So carboxylic acid will have more tendency to lose H plus and convert itself into a carboxylate ion. Hence carboxylic acids are more acidic as compared to phenol. Similarly what we find is that carbs, bicarbonate carbonic acid is more acidic as compared to phenol because bicarbonate is a weaker base as compared to phenooxide ion. Now what we have to do, do is we have to see what is the effect of substituents on the acidity of phenols. Generally please remember electron withdrawing groups increase the acidity of phenol because they will pull the electrons towards itself thereby making the release of proton easy. Second 
in the phenoxide ion, they help in greater dispersal of the negative charge by minus i, minus r effect or by both the effects. Whereas, and then we have what we see is that if the electron withdrawing groups like nitro, CN, C or LDHD group, if they are present at ortho or the para group positions to OH, then these compounds are stronger acids as compared to other, as compared to meta derivative or as compared to phenol. It is because minus R plays a very important role because it will extend conjugation. This we will see with an example of nitrobenzene. And if we look into this example, I would like to take this here. So, what we find here is that if I talk of this anion here, here the nitro group is an electron withdrawing group. If this nitro group was not present here, then the anion would be stabilized just by the dispersal of this negative charge over the benzene nucleus. When this nitro group is present at the ortho or the para position, then what we find is that this delocalization of the negative charge is extended to the oxygen of the nitro group. Hence, making this nitrophenoxide anion more stable as compared to phenol. Hence, what we say is that para nitrophenol is more acidic as compared to phenol. Whereas, if an electron with donating group is present on the phenol nucleus, then it increases the electron density on phenoxy oxygen, thereby making the cleavage of this bond difficult. Hence, hence the re release of proton becomes difficult. So, what we find is that if electron donating groups like methyl or methoxy are present at ortho or para positions to OH, then they will destabilize this by increasing the negative charge on the oxygen. And this molecule that is chrysol will be, will be less acidic as compared to phenol. Now, not only this, we have to look into the relative position of the substituents. Like if I talk of a nitro group, whether this nitro group is present at ortho or para position to the OH group or at meta position. And we know that and we will be seeing in these further examples also that the acid strengthening effect of electron withdrawing group or acid weakening effect is more prominent when these groups are present at ortho or para positions to OH. Second thing that we have to keep in mind is when we are discussing the acidity that both inductive and resonance effects may stabilize the anion formed or destabilize the anion formed depending whether they exert a minus i and minus r effect or plus i and plus r effect. These two effects that is the minus i and the minus r may be synergistic in which case they will increase the acidity of the compound or they may be antagonist in which case they may increase or decrease the acidity of the compound as compared to phenol. So, now let us look, look into the relative positions of nitro in nitrophenol. So, first what we find is that para nitrophenol is most acidic followed by ortho nitrophenol, then meta nitrophenol and phenol is least acidic. Why do you think this happens? We have what we have seen here is that phenol gives away H plus and forms a phenoxide ion. So, we know when a nitro group is at ortho or para position to this group, it exerts a minus I as well as minus R effect. So, because of this minus R effect, this negative charge is spread over both the oxygens here and this is a highly stable anion. Here, the minus I effect will be slightly weak because these two groups are further away from each other. What we find in case of meta nitrophenol is in phenoxide ion here, 
that is the conjugation cannot take place here that is this nitro group cannot undergo resonance with the lone pair of electrons on this oxygen and they exert only minus i effect. Hence, what we say is para nitrophenol is more acidic as compared to meta nitrophenol. Now, if we look into ortho nitrophenol, then in ortho nitrophenol both the groups, both the effects are taking place that is minus i effect as well as minus r effect. Because of minus r effect, the negative charge is delocalized over the oxygens and if I hear the minus i effect will be strongest because this group is very, very near to this phenooxide oxygen. So, technically if I talk then ortho nitrophenol should be more acidic than para nitrophenol, but that is not the case. Why? Because here what we find is as I have already told you that these two groups when are present at ortho position here intramolecular hydrogen bonding takes place. And because of this intramolecular hydrogen bonding the elimination of this H plus or this deprotonation reaction becomes difficult. Hence what we say the order of acidity of phenols is para nitrophenol where minus i as well as minus r effect is effective followed by ortho nitrophenol then meta nitrophenol and finally phenol is least acidic. Now if I look into chlorobenzenes then we know that chlorobenzene in case of chlorobenzenes orthochlorophenol sorry is most acidic followed by meta chlorophenol then para chlorophenol and then phenol. We know that this halogen atom has two antagonistic effects that is it exerts a very strong minus i effect and a weak plus r effect. So, here what is effective here is the minus i effect and because of this minus i effect it will pull the electrons towards itself. But this minus i effect is also not very strong since these two groups are away from each other. Now, if we look into this here the plus r effect is strongest due to which there is acid weakening effect and at the same time minus i effect is also there which is also equally strong. So, what we say here is and if I now look into the next example then we will come to the conclusion that in this case when halogen is present at the meta position then only minus i effect takes place and there is no possibility of conjugation happening. So, what we say here is that ortho chlorophenol is most acidic because of the very strong minus i effect here followed by meta chlorophenol then para chlorophenol because here the acid weakening effect that is plus r effect is stronger and then phenol is least acidic. In the next lecture we shall be now dealing with the effect of electron donating groups on the acidity of phenol and then summarize the acidity of phenols. Thank you. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for delivering a vivacious session on phenols today and uh, as discussed with uh, Dr. Aprajita Chauhan that we would be carrying an independent lecture on the uses of phenols very soon. Dear friends, if you have any kind of queries or if you want to give your feedback for this particular lecture, then do write to us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. Dear friends, we would be meeting again very soon and would be discussing more as Dr. Aprajita Chauhan herself said. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.